Well guys, today's video topic is is thermal paste dead and obsolete? And now while this might seem like the usual intro to one of those videos about overpriced graphene thermal pads which nobody is actually going to use in the end, this is actually going to be a pretty interesting video even if you are on a tight budget because what we're covering here today is the gelid heat phase ultra. And now this thing, the reason it caught my interest is you can buy one for the exorbitant price of four dollars. So I think it's pretty much affordable on every single PC you're going to build. And now what this is, is a thermal paste replacement thermal pad. So the idea is you apply this guy instead of thermal paste on your CPU. Now, what are the supposed benefits for which we should be using it? Well, first of all, this eliminates all the debate about how to apply your thermal paste, you know, dot method, cross method, just spreading method, dipping your finger in it like I used to do, you know, this you just apply it. And uh, we'll cover how you apply it very soon, but it's actually pretty easy. But other than that, this is supposed to last a lot longer than thermal paste. So if you have a high performance PC, especially, you are generally going to be replacing your thermal paste once every two to three years. If you're running a very high overclocked PC, probably once every year or two, pretty much. That's good maintenance, but generally once every two to three years, you really want to replace it, right? But with this product, you should be able to simply leave it there forever. So that's why today we set off on this testing for you guys. And that's what we went ahead and did. So basically, we are using one of these builds with the LC Power Gaming Android W I've had on the channel. Now, don't mind the actual uh, GPU extension sitting out there, but we are testing it against Jelly's own thermal paste. They make very good paste, by the way. They've been making like cooling accessories, uh, AIO water coolers and paste for a while. So basically, what we're doing is we're testing the baseline with thermal paste and then taking a look at the after. So what you see now on the screen is me testing it. We've run basically a few tests. Basically, we've run CPU-Z to get a performance baseline first and then checking the temperature during the CPU-Z benchmark. Then we've run the CPU-Z stress test, which is actually pretty heavy nowadays with AVX instructions. And then we moved forward to priority 5 for a really heavy testing and we let it run for a while and came back. So after taking the full baseline of the first run, we now went ahead and installed the heat phase. Now the cooler I'm using is a 360 meters only one water cooler, but this thing is going to work for air cooler, water cooler, all of it. But this unknown brand cooler is actually pretty good. We've covered it in the past on the channel. So we went ahead, cleaned up the paste and actually moved forward to applying the heat phase ultra on it. Now, how do you do it is you're supposed to apply it on the CPU cooler block. It comes with an instruction manual, so it's very hard to do it wrong. But I decided to install it on the CPU. Why? Because I'm bored and I like to make things the wrong way. But it was pretty easy to install still. You have to spread it evenly though, uh, using like uh, a card or something. Here we use this very cool card, which was included in the Asia Horse uh, Wandering Night Cooler, which we covered in the wooden PC build a while back. Uh, but anyways, we got it uninstalled. It was pretty evenly spread. We closed it all out and we went ahead with the further testing with the afterwards. And we ran basically the same suite as we did before. Now, first thing I noticed, by the way, before we get into the testing, is the idle temperature was slightly higher, okay? But this may also have been because, you know, it was the first time we applied it, maybe after a while it stabilizes, but on idle, it was like two or three degrees higher. But again, measuring idle temperatures is kind of a hit and miss because you turn on the PC, maybe different processes start, you know, so this doesn't really matter. But we went ahead and rerun all of our underload testing, which will translate into PC gaming as well. And again, so we got a CPU-Z baseline, no performance difference. We run the stress test and we run priority five. Now we'll put a little graph up here, but the results are actually pretty good because basically we got no difference. Well, we actually got difference outside of margin of error because it was one and a half to two degrees hotter on average across the average of three runs on both configurations. So you're running, you're losing one degree, which honestly, even if you are a really high overclocker is not really gonna matter, which brings us to the conclusion. So this thing is not gonna be like, like liquid metal performance, like you've seen on the Cryonaut graphene pad, but that pad costs a lot of money while this pad costs $4. So 
we weren't really expecting that. But the idea is that if you use this, you're never going to replace the paste. And we can say for sure after those tests that you're not going to lose any performance. So basically, even economically, if you buy one of these, you don't have to buy any paste later on. And you don't have to do maintenance to your PC. Well, you still have to clean the dust, but you don't have to dismount it all, clean it all up, put a new paste, which is supposedly going to be very good. Now, in theory, this is going to last forever, but realistically, it's going to last maybe for the life of the PC. So probably, I don't know, six years or something. But if you want, I can make a follow-up video in like five years and tell you guys if it's still running properly. I will actually keep it uh, and do some further tests. All in all, to be honest, it has my full recommendation because it does what it promised it was going to do, and it does it pretty well, and it's very easy to install. I think literally every single one of you guys could install it. Internal paste obsolete. I don't know. Like if they start to pre-install these pads out of factory on only one coolers, so basically you don't have to ever change your paste, then we might actually see a shift in paradigm in how we see the PC building world. But uh, four dollars. While it's cheap to us consumers, it's probably a lot of money uh, for factories, but maybe they can get it for like half price, so $2. So we will see. But I think if it comes pre-applied on the cooler, it's going to be great. And if you guys want to do it to never replace your paste again, it's also a pretty good idea. So internal paste might be obsolete, actually. But uh, I will leave to you guys the conclusion. Do it down below. Is internal paste actually obsolete? And if you watched the video this far, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you're new around here, we have many more builds, tests, reviews, overclocking tutorials, and other weird things we do. So you might want to check those out. So see you in the next one, guys. Bye.